be. And can it be? Sing aloud with me, because I know you guys are tired and hungry. All right, let's stand up, let's stand up. And can it be that I should gain an evening in the same? All right, let's do it again, let's do it again. All right, let's do it again. All right, are you guys ready? Okay, ready. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? That he for me who cast his Belongs to me. 
Amen. Thank you, Brother Ray. Thank you for that, that prayer. And yes, we need to pray for our leadership of the country. Amen. I don't know about that. You know, sometimes I'm having a hard time. I'm having a hard time reading now, the, I mean, the news and all those. And it just saddens me because uh, now they approve. They approve 86 million to house the illegal immigrants in there. So they will house the illegal immigrants and men, but just imagine this, how many homeless people that we have around. And you know, you don't have to look around for many. I mean, we have a lot here. And so that, it, it is just really, it bubbles me why those things are happening. You know, I don't know, but uh, we need to pray for our leadership in the country. So uh, just do that. And again, it's nice to see Sister Ted, amen? amen. That is something, oh, next time we, we should have soup, amen? We should have soup, so Sister that can eat good. All right. And so what a blessing that uh, she's here today. And, and uh, so we'll be singing more. All right. And so that that, that will be something. All right. So continue to uh, let's uh, call on the Pastor DJ. Maybe he's going to say something. All right. So I would like to welcome, welcome those that are in, uh, uh, I mean, tuning with us in live, I mean, through Facebook and also uh, YouTube. All right. We'd like to welcome you. And it's too bad that uh, you're not here with us, but uh, hopefully that you can join us. It's, it's already, you know, it's already free for everyone to just come and, you know, to worship together, but still, we still need to have our, uh, our social distancing, all right? Six feet apart, all right, six feet apart, and also 10 feet, whatever it is. <laughs> all right, so, but anyway, we they make sure that we still have a face covering, we have to use that, and even if you are, uh, vaccinated already that is still needed amen that's what they said all right no handshaking just uh fish bump or whatever that may be you call uh, that uh, elbow all right so we'll just do that and uh and then again this coming wednesday our wednesday uh, prayer meeting okay so continue to uh to be in prayer for one another especially for our our uh, cha prayer chain okay for our prayer chain i you know that is something that is really needed uh, you know if you just think about this, that is, uh, if you are not used to that, get used to it because we needed prayer. We need to pray for one another and just imagine a chain that is broken, that is no good. So that's why get all your times right there, get your times. And when you made the promise, you didn't promise Pastor DJ, but you promised, you promised God that you will be doing that. And so pray for that. And again, I think uh, the Sister Ted and Brother Tony and the church building and all those. And just pray for our Wednesday prayer request that we have that we have in WhatsApp. One thing you know that is it will take you an hour. It will, you will, I mean, that is, you will pass the 30 minutes, okay? You will pass the 30 minutes. One thing you know, well, I need one hour. So, but we need you to replace the time slot available 6 and 7 p.m. So, that was 6 and 6, 6. 6.30 to 7 p.m. Is that right? 
6 to 6.30 and 7 to 7.30? No, 6, 6 to 30, 6.30 to 7. So 6.30 to 6.30. Six to 6.30 to 6.30. Okay, so, so 6 to 6.30 and then 6.30 to 7. No, because they put it there, 7. Okay. So that means I thought it would be. All right, so 6 to 7, 6, 6 to 6.30 and 7.30 to, ah. 6.30 to 7. All right, so I hope you understand me. All right, so, <laughs> so if not, if you have a problem, that all right. So anyway, continue to pray. Continue to pray for the church building and whatever it may be. Or pray that the Lord will touch the heart. If you, I mean, I know that May is coming. May is coming. That's the time that, that the lease will be over. But if we still haven't find a building, I hope and pray that, uh, let's pray that they will still hold on to the 2,000 or maybe another two, five or 3,000, whatever it may be. But I, I know that the Lord's in control with it. We just have to be faithful in our prayer and continue to reach out uh, to, you know, to what, uh, what God would like uh, for us to do. So that will be a blessing as you can see all your time. That's the church building. And I know some of you have seen that. And now you can see that the time for that. We have the 12 p.m. All right, the 12 p.m. Uh, all right, so you can do that 12 p.m. That's today, earlier. All right, but it's Sunday, it's Sunday, so it's Sunday, and that stops. All right, but it's Sunday, that stops. So we start again tonight. We start again tonight, and we will end again for next week. All right, Saturday. But Sunday, there's day off, because we are here in the church. So don't forget, online giving. All right, don't forget online giving, 626-927-8712. And for your stimulus, here. All right, so that is where you can put in there. Oh, so is there, my name is there? All right, so, oh, no, no, I'm just kidding. All right, so but anyway, April Bible study. All right, April Bible study. Whose home are available? Mine is available if you guys would like. All right, yeah, if you guys would like, I, 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 I can maybe about April less. Last Saturday of April, I will give you the address that is in Tansa, Cavite. And so if you guys are willing, you are, I, I am inviting you to come for Bible study. All right? From Riverside, it's not going to take you that long. All right. But anyway, so if anyone would like to open their home, we started it already with Sister Ted. All right? With Sister Ted and uh, Sister Jenny yesterday. And then the following next month and so whatever it may be. And as Pastor DJ is planning, pray for that. You know, what we can do is so we can go to the cell Bible study, home Bible study, if it's in Anaheim, whatever it may be, or Riverside, all right, if it's Riverside. So Riverside, if, when you go to Riverside, that's free, uh, free, uh, free fruits and all those vegetables, flowers, that will be given, right? So, oh, there, oh. All right, so, no, it's not, it's, it's not listening anymore. All right, so. <laughs> That, that, that one also, you can help him dig, the, <laughs> in digging so you can help him, $50 an hour, okay, so but anyway, that's about it, and Easter Sunday, April 4th, all right, April 4th, that is my grandson's birthday, oh no, not yet, Luke is five. Oh, and then Sharon is April 3th, so that's in between, huh, also, Oh, April 4, wow, that's a lot of Aprils, all right. So that, that is something, okay. So, but next week, next Sunday, will be Brother, brother, uh, brother Naps, all right. So when, okay, it's Brother Naps' birthday, so it's okay for you to take a nap, all right. So, <laughs> all right, well, it's nice to do that. And also, men, we're trying to uh, set up something. We're trying to set up something. We talked about that yesterday. I don't know if we can set it up and... Uh, we will be going to Floppy Jobs. All right, you know where's Floppy Jobs? That is uh, Glendora. I don't know if it's Glendora or Azusa. Glendora, Route 66. Yeah, it's a Route 66. You know, we're just going to eat pancake. One pancake is good enough because it, it's big. It can cover your face. All right, that is how big is the, the pancake in there. Well, we will be heading on that. All right, so man, let's start. We start, and the ladies also will be doing something i think they are going on a trip to outlet okay whatever it may be okay so all right so oh they got excited oh outlet. okay all right outlet okay so anyway let's uh, let's uh, get started one more song one more song and we will have a special 
we will have a special. The Berte Celebrant will be singing. <laughs> no, no, we will, uh, you know, the, the birthday Celebrant will be singing. And uh, Brother Chet will say, okay, I have to go now. <laughs> We have to go now and all those. So. But you know what? I know that you're not going to sing, but don't worry about it. Brother Ike will take over. He's got his ukulele right there. So, ah, uh, Brother Ike? Bayang bayang magili. All right, the family of God. Aren't you glad that you're part of the family of God? Amen? Ready now. I'm so glad. I don't page. Two seventy five. Two seventy five. All right, here we go. Here, Sharon.
Thank you, ladies. Thank you, ladies, for singing a beautiful song, It Is Well With My Soul. And that's, uh, and that's one of the things we should be able to say, Lord, you've taken care of us so far, so good. We trust in the Lord and we follow after him. Amen? Amen. Beautiful singing, beautiful song. Thank you so much, ladies. It is well with my soul. All right. I just want to remind you all, just uh, we, on the Facebook, they're telling everybody to pray for the Philippines. So Deacon Romy is telling everybody that they are locked down, locked down in the Philippines. So uh, uh, we need to pray uh, for just the Philippines, their safety and protection there. Also, there was a loss. Uh, if you remember Will and Cherry, Will's uh, mother died uh, this past week. So we pray for their family. Continue to pray for one another for your health and safety and strength. And uh, keep praying for wisdom. And I appreciate all the <coughs> prayers for us, me and my wife, as we're back here safe and sound from the, the, what we experienced there in Hawaii. So we bless you. But it's good to see everybody. I'm glad that we can be back just in church together. And uh, I really just uh, I'm thankful for, for God's goodness. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, uh, I just look back and. I don't know if you guys were looking at your paper this morning with all the check marks. Isn't it God good? Yeah. You know, how much God has been able to accomplish. And I, you know what? We need to just remind ourselves over and over how God is so good. How dare us complain? How dare we argue with God? He's done so much. And the sad truth is, you know, the blessing of the Lord, his hand moves away from the children who are obedient or disobedient disobedient and I hope and pray that the church we realize that that when we're disobedient or we're not following out the Lord expect hardship uh, expect your tires are going to blow out expect bad news expect some difficulty expect your spirit to be down why because you are disobeying God and uh, I want to encourage you when you serve the Lord when you love on him and things are tough, difficult, but you just say, Lord, I still believe in you, I still trust in you. Keep reminding yourself that God's goodness will give you the strength to pull through, all right? So let's open our Bibles today as we, uh, we're just going to kind of continue the message that we went to. Let's open our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12 in verse 1, Hebrews chapter 12 in verse 1. Amen. You can remain seated. We'll just read, we'll read three verses here. It's a familiar message. I just kind of want to talk about... Um, what we've been through, uh, it's been the one year anniversary of the lockdown. And I remember telling my wife, do you think this is going to last till Easter? Well, I don't know, but look how long it's been, one year. Um, has it been politicized? Unfortunately, yes, it has. Um, uh, did we lose real people? Yes, we did re lose real people. And is it discouraging? A little bit. It's a little bit discouragement. But let me tell you God's ways to overcome that. So let's open our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. And uh, let's read here. Okay. This is a very familiar passage of Scripture because last year, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 2, was our theme for the year. That's looking unto Jesus. So here's Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. The Bible says, Wherefore, seeing we are so are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Let's have a word of prayer and let God help us. Father God, heaven and Lord, we're grateful for your love and mercy in our hearts and our lives. Uh, we don't deserve it, but your goodness uh, is so good. Watch over us now. Give us strength to keep following and serving after you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, this morning we talked about all the blessings that God has given to us. Don't forget them. Appreciate them. Love them. Say, Lord, thank you for your provision. It's wonderful. I mean, just to think how many of us here, and, and I'm not one to say I've been born in America, but some of you guys were born in the Philippines in the province, and you're able to see what God has done to be able to be where you are today, right? Some of you guys... Uh, to be in America, all right? I remember talking to a missionary. I said he was, uh, uh, if he didn't become a missionary, he'd work in the mines, he'd work in the mines. And to be able to see what God has done in his life, he's able to come to America, go to Disneyland, and to think 
he, if he stayed in the world serving himself, he would still be in the mines back in the Philippines. I said, what about your neighbor in the Philippines? They haven't even been on an airplane. They have never left town. And for many of you here, you probably have the same situation where your family or your friends back when you grew up are still in the Philippines and you never left town, your neighbor. So I'm grateful to see what God can do in your life. I'm grateful to see that God answers your prayers. I, I'm thankful every Wednesday we have answered prayers. Every Wednesday. Now, I heard Brother Knapp was praying for your son. Hey, what a, what a, one week, less than one week, God answers our prayer. I mean, that's a blessing from the Lord. That's God's goodness, right? When you're faithful to God, expect your prayers to be answered. Expect your prayers to be answered. So thank you so much for that, Brother Knapp. And, and just, I just want us to remind ourselves over and over, we have a good God. And, and one thing that I've learned that our prayer, how we're all connected in prayer, it really has just made us more grateful, right? Uh, everyone here is praying. I can feel it. We're all praying, not just regular prayer time, but additional prayer time. And, and you know what? I feel like the church is grateful. And the more you see God, the more you're with God, the more grateful. We, we have no choice but to be grateful. Amen? Amen. For all his goodness, there's no, no choice to be grateful. So I want to encourage you on that. And that gratitude is completely great, but we can add to it. Right? We can make it a little bit better. And this is what we're talking about here in the scriptures. For instance, you know, uh, you have a lechon outside, right? If you put a little bit of the, what's that brown sauce? What's the brown sauce of the lechon? Mang tumas. If you add a, a little bit of mang tumas, it just makes your lechon even better. Am I right? Just a little bit better. Does anyone like the mang tumas sauce? Yeah, that's good stuff, right? Yeah. How come... How come we don't eat that with other things? Like, can you eat mang tamas with regular like rotisserie chicken? Yeah. It just seems like it's always lechon. So. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, you can go to Costco, rotisserie chicken, and get the sauce, right? Or can you eat it with like salmon or regular fish? Oh no, no, oh no, that one, no, no, no. But the chicken, yeah, good chicken. Okay, all right, good to know. But it's just a little bit better. It just increases it better, and. Reminding us Christians, when you serve the Lord, gratitude is great, but a little bit better is this next one. Look what the Bible says here towards the end. It says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that easily looks at us, and let us run with patience the race that was set before us. I like to focus in on that word is to run. To run. The Bible says run, don't walk. The Bible says run, don't stand still. The Bible says run, don't crawl. It's to move forward. To move forward. Now, when I see this race that is set before us, there's a prize at the end of the race. Whenever you reach the end of the finish line, there is a goal to be had. And with the gratitude that God has given you, take it and run with it. Take it and move forward. Take it and don't let it just stagnate. Move forward. You know, when I think back at talking to Jem about the beautiful Hawaii sunset and everything, it's no big deal to them no big deal. They've, they've lost how special it is because to them it's just a regular day. Christians, we must not forget God's goodness. We must appreciate it every single day. And the way to appreciate it is to move. To move it. Let it propel you. Let it motivate you to keep serving the Lord. Why? Because really, the opposite of being thankful for God's goodness is to be what? To not be thankful, but to be dissatisfied. Everything in this world will not give you full satisfaction. It won't. It won't. My wife and I, when we were on the vacation, I'm going to talk about the vacation for a little bit, and I, I won't talk about this one, but we, we had this beautiful view. But eventually, we had to, all right, let's do something else now. Right? You lose the satisfaction, no matter how beautiful it is here. Why? Because the world's only going to give you temporary satisfaction. Temporary satisfaction. Once you get over it, you lose it. But with God, he gives you eternal satisfaction. The mercy that he gives to us every single day, the, the love that he gives us, the protection that he gives us, the mercy every single day, we must not lose it. So we have to keep going with it. 
We propel it forward. We propel it forward. Let's open our Bibles to Phila, uh, Phil, uh, Phil, Philippines. <laughs> Let's open it to the Philippines chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Here's the next one that I want you to see. So I want you to see the word run, to move forward. Look at Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 through 14. The Bible says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before. Verse 14, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, this is the next word that I want to say is to press. We see the word run is to move forward, it's to press, to put pressure, to put your mark, to move forward. Now, it's not a surprise that the Bible uses these two words almost synonymously. If you want to grow and you want to have true happiness and joy, it's not about looking behind you. It's about moving forward to press. Look at the Bible says here in verse 13. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. You know, before salvation, all we had was heartache. Am I right? All we had is frustration. Loss, pain, worry, anxiety. That's all we had before salvation. But when we met Jesus Christ, that beautiful day for me when I was in summer camp, I bent my knee to the ground and I cried to the Lord for salvation. And he saved me. He survived and he and he and he supplied me joy that I never felt before. Happiness that I never felt before because he answered my biggest prayer request, and that's a need of a savior. I look back and I think, why is it that as Christians, if the world is offering agony and pain, why do we look back and hold on to it? Why do we hold on and reach for it? When the Bible says here, I forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward. Reaching mm -hmm. forward. Pressing forward. All the things that God has given you thankfulness, to be thankful for even more, to be grateful for even more. That's action. That's moving forward. Sadly to say, though, we as Christians look back far too often. And when we look back far too often, we forget what's in front of us. We forget about the joy that God provides. We forget the goodness that God gives us. So we see that Paul says in Hebrews to run. He says here to press forward. Let's open the Bible to First Peter chapter five verse eight. First Peter chapter five verse eight, and we're almost done. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Now I've talked about this verse many times. Notice the first verse was to run, right? The second one was to press, right? To run and to press. Who is walking here, the Bible says, for people in the Bible says? Who's walking? Who's walking here? Be sober and vigilant because your adversary, the devil, what does he do? He walks. He's walking. And when he walks, he walks to devour. That's his goal, to walk to devour. Right? Now, let's kind of picture in our minds things that run versus things that walk. Right? If you notice the animal being chased by a lion, the lion doesn't get them all. The lion only gets one or two. Well, what does the lion get, the slow one? The one in the back. He misses on the ones who what? Run. Right? The ones who run, he doesn't catch. The ones who run, he doesn't catch. Uh, I'm sure you've heard about, heard it before. If you're ever going to try to outrun a bear, you and your friend, you don't have to outrun the bear. What do you have to do? Outrun your friend. Right? Why? Because if you can outrun your friend, that means the bear beats your friend. <laughs> but if you're faster than the bear, congratulations. But you know what? 
If the devil is running after you and he's walking, should we walk? Should we go slow? No. In two occasions, we saw the Bible telling us to move with press, with, with urgency, to move forward. To move forward. Right? To move forward. Like you're running late for work. How many of you, when you're running late for work, you, you drive a little bit faster? Right? How many of you, when you're late for an appointment, you move a little bit faster? You're, you're moving with more urgency. That's what the Bible says. To press, to move fast. Why? Because if you don't, the devil is right behind you. And I share that to this extent because when the devil who walks catches up to you, what does he do? The Bible says he devours. He devours. So for the Christian, and to tie it all together from this morning's message and from today, when you walk, it's not fast enough. When you just live, it's not fast enough. But when you are motivated by the goodness of the Lord, you're moving forward. You're running. You're pressing. Because you're motivated by the Lord. You're motivated by his goodness and all the good things that God has provided for you. But I dare say, if you are complaining and you're running out of church and leaving, not praying, not reading your Bible and saying, I'm out of here, I don't care about God anymore, you're slowing down. You're slowing down. And what happens? The devil who walks catches up. Now, I'll close on this because it's really been a tough year as I look back. It's been one full year. We had online streaming services only, right? And then we came back for a little bit. And then we went outdoors and came back and had all the... It was tough. My wife and I, we were gone for just a week. And it was hard just to get back in the swing of things to get back to church. I understand for you guys... We're watching on the stream. It's really different from watching the stream and watching in person. Now, some of you guys do it regularly. I, I commend you. But coming in person, it's completely different. What do you mean? When you go on home, you're, you're watching. You can pause. You can raise the volume. Sometimes there's technical difficulties. You're wearing pajamas. You have a cup of coffee in your hand. And your attention span's a little bit different. Right? And then coming back to church, you have to readjust. You know, you have to put effort. Now, don't get me wrong. Does God love the effort? Absolutely. It's part of your service. That you wake up early, you dress up, look nice, you brush your teeth, you wake up, you get to church. That's effort. God blesses the effort. But one of the things that I, I look back on, the people who gave the effort, God bless, but the lack of effort, it's hard. It's hard. If you're so used to walking, it's so hard to run. You know what I mean? It's so hard to run. I, I'm not in the best shape anymore. I, I, you know, I'm not. But you know, when you start to run again, it's hard. And we've had COVID-19 this whole year. And some people haven't been back at church. And some people aren't giving God his time and whatever. And I can see how hard it is. So my statement from earlier this morning was you look at all the good things that God has done take it and run take it and move forward because I, I can easily see I, I got a yesterday or two days ago I look on Craigslist for church I'm looking at churches everywhere I'm looking on LoopNet I'm looking on websites and I look at Craigslist for churches up for sale and I saw this one church in Pomona I text I, I, I message him uh, we're closing down after 28 years and uh, I messaged them. We have a yard sale, a big sale, selling pews, selling the pulpit, selling everything. And we didn't get to go because we were just Bible studying. But I said, boy, I said, I emailed them, hey, are you guys, what you guys doing? I haven't heard back. But, but, you know, it's not a rarity to hear things like that. You know, it's not a rarity. When I was calling up churches, oh, we haven't had church this whole entire time. Can you imagine not going to church? That's a whole lot of walking. That's a whole lot of not moving. And what does the devil see? He sees easy prey. 
we, we pray. So I want to encourage you. I want to challenge you. Men, women, don't be easy prey. Take what God has given you and challenge yourself to say, I want more. I want to do more for God. Now, I, I did talk about the stimulus. My dad talked about the stimulus. That's, that's a small thing. But you know what? Giving that to the Lord makes a big difference. You show him that you're willing to trust him. Now, I'm not telling you I want you to do it. Do what you want. But let me tell you something. I know for a fact when you bless the Lord, he always blesses you. There's no, there's no just ends or buts. God blesses those who bless him. So I want to encourage you. Take with the things that God has given you and use it for the Lord. Bless him. Not just the stimulus, but your voice, your time, your your abilities, your prayer time. Give it to the Lord, and you'll see that the efforts that God has done, He will transform them. And I end on that note. If you don't run, you'll be watching your easy prey. Don't be easy prey. Don't be easy prey. Force yourself to get up and move. Force yourself to run. Now, I don't run. As you can, as you can tell, I don't run. <laughs> I should be, but I need to do more. <coughs> but, you know, a lot of times when I want to exercise, I'm like, oh, I can do it later. Oh, I'm too tired. Ah, uh, I have other things to do. A lot of excuses, am I right? There's the same amount of excuses in serving the Lord, am I right? A lot of excuses. I don't want to go to church with COVID. I don't want to give to the Lord because I need the money. I don't want to go to church because I don't like this person. I don't want to go to church because I want to find something else. I don't want to go to church because I don't blah, blah, blah. You know what? That's a lot of excuses just to walk. And those excuses to walk are excuses that the devil wants to hear. Am I right? The devil wants to hear those excuses. To do what? To eat you. To devour you. So, I close on that. Church, press forward. Church, Run the race because the devil's walking. And if you don't run, you start to walk, the devil will come and get you. We, some of you guys had on your paper how many check marks? Right? How many check marks? 20? 30? Oh, don't we have a good God? And I know He can give you even more if you surrender more to Him. So, church, He's a good God. And at the same time, I say this, there's a devil who wants to move, and he's ready to move. Don't let the devil catch up to you. Don't let the devil catch up to you. Move forward, son. It's good to be in God's house. Amen. It's good to serve the Lord. Amen. But when you're not here, when your heart's not here, your mind's not here, when you're not in the Word, that's walking. Maybe that's even standing still. Who gets you then? Who gets you? The devil. Move forward. That's a word of prayer. Father God in heaven, Lord, uh, Lord, I know today wasn't the most deepest of messages, Lord, but we saw your goodness earlier today. Many people saw it today. And we saw how many. And Lord, we look at what do we do for you? I mean, Lord, it's a challenge to going. But Lord, it's a challenge if we don't move forward. The reaction would be us walking. And the devil walks. And the devil devours. But you, you've given to us as a motivator to run, to serve, and to surrender. Bless the time of your patient name and your prayer. Amen. With your head bowed, eyes closed, nobody looking around. Let's probably stand to our feet. I want to encourage you walk. Uh, no, excuse me, I want to encourage you to run. Uh, run to the Lord. Use what God has given you. Thank Him every single day. Let it motivate you. The devil's walking. You shouldn't walk. You run. Move forward. So with your head bowed, eyes closed, nobody looking around, the piano's quietly going to play. Why don't we stand and just talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I want to just give to you. I want to surrender. Uh, Lord, the stimulus, my time, my efforts, my money, whatever, You've given me so much, I want to give back more to you. So with that being said, the piano is playing, the altar is open, I need to run, because if not, I walk, and I'll be in danger.
So in church, the Lord spoke to you in any way, shape, or form in the altar. So if you want to talk to God today at the old-fashioned altar, and ask the Lord to give you strength. So the piano is playing, the altar is open. God is speaking to you today. Talk to the Lord. Father, in heaven, Lord, we love you, and we're grateful for your goodness and mercy, Lord. You've provided and blessed us with so many things. I pray that we get that courage up to serve you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that we don't let our flesh stop us from obeying you and seeing the blessings. Lord, with that, we move forward because we know our walks. I pray that we love you, to be closer to you, to be safe, to be sweet in your blessing. So, Lord, as we of our lives. I pray, Lord, that we don't let money hold us back, let our sin hold us back, our flesh hold us back, and let us give and serve you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. It's a blessing to be in God's house today. Uh, a couple of quick things right before I'm going to end the service on the stream. Uh, I want to invite you to join us again next Sunday and Wednesday, 7.30, 10.11, and also uh, our Bible studies are open for to have that, and uh, we will probably let you guys know when it happens, right? So for those on the stream, we'll see you later. God bless, and you will see you next time.